everybody, it's Andrew Ames of the Golf Academy. Warm welcome as always, thanks for tuning into the video today. Um, I was doing a little bit of thinking last night about YouTube and sort of how I present my videos, blah, 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 and how can I make things a little bit better. And I've done this, been down this route before, so again, I'd love to get your input on it. Me standing here with the latest Cobra driver trying to swing the club as fast as I can and hit the ball as far as I can may not be relevant to a lot of the golfers who watch my videos. Now, I don't want people to take this personally, but when I swing flat out, I can get up to maybe 105, 106 miles an hour club speed. I'm, I'm fully aware that not everyone can achieve those sort of club speeds. So it's fairly irrelevant, me standing here trying to swing at those sorts of speeds for the people out there watching it who maybe swing the driver at 86 miles an hour or 92 miles an hour club head speed we're talking about here. So I thought what I'd do is I've done this before in the past and I want to go back and do a bit more of these. Let's try this new Cobra Rad XB driver. Let's tell you a little bit about it. I'm not going to give you too much spec. Again, I've been thinking about, you know, talking about this and that, and the face material and how the club's put together and the weighting and all the rest of it. I'm just going to give you a fairly brief description on how it works um, in terms of the tech. If you're interested in all that stuff, just dive on the website. You know, they'll tell you better descriptions and more clearer than I can do it. So let's make these videos a little bit more on the hitability of the driver. And I thought what would be fun at the end is just to kind of give the driver a sort of a mark out of 10 for, you know, playable looks, appearance, maybe one category, um, playability, um, price, and maybe a couple of other categories that I'll, I'll think up up and then mark it out of 10 and give it like an overall score. And then through the year, as we review things like the G425 driver, the new Mizuno driver, I'll get my hands probably on some other brands as well this year. We can see how they all stack up, um, you know, in terms of how many points they get out of 50 points or whatever. So it creates a sort of a league, if you like. So if you think that's a decent idea, then comment down below. So that's my plan. Let's tell you a little bit about this Cobra Rad XB driver. This is, there's three drivers in the range. You've got the Speed, you've got the XB, and then you've got the Draw Bias driver. The Speed is designed for, as the name implies, people who are creating high club speeds. I think to get the most out of the Speed driver, you've got to be 100 miles an hour plus to, to really get it working and get all the benefits from it. So this one kind of sits right in the middle. It's designed to be very forgiving. And the way they do that, we'll give you some overhead video shots of it, is where the XB comes from is extreme back. So if you have a little look at the back of the club here, you see the rad speed weight at the back here where it says 14G. That's a 14 gram weight stuck back at the club. Now with center of gravity, if you position weight sort of back in the club, it helps launch the ball. It does other things as well, but it basically makes the ball easier to launch. If you push all the weight forward in the club, then it tends to make it launch lower. And with the weight forward, the theory is it's not quite as forgiving. It's a bit more forgiving. You can um, increase the MOI, moment of inertia. Think of MOI as a resistance to twisting. So again, by having weight back, the theory is that you can increase the MOI, making it a bit more stable. So 14 gram fixed weight in there. Next to it, you'll see another weight, which has six on it. That's a six gram weight. Now, I don't know this for sure. I'm going to be doing some more um, info product training on this club. So I'll find out a bit more if there are additional weights you can stick in there, like a 12 gram weight to really get the weight back. Going to the front of the club, again, these are fixed weights at the front. We've got two radial weights, which are both four grams. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to sort of wrap weight all around the club here in the important areas to make it more forgiving. It's got this carbon thin ply wrap. Um, it's got the, the, the face on here is the is CNC milled. And the idea is that it's milled all the way to the extremes 
So if you do hit one at the toe or at the heel or low in the club, this face design helps keep the ball speed up. That's the general tech of it. I've got the 10 and a half degree version. Obviously it's adjustable and this will move from nine degrees all the way up to 12 degrees and it does have some draw settings in it. The shaft I've put in it today to try, these are gonna be regular shafts because I'm gonna be swinging the club a little bit slower than I would do normally. I've got the Fujikora Motara, I think that's the way we pronounce it, Motara, and X F3. Um, I'll put the spec up down below. I'm guessing it's somewhere around about 60 grams. Reg flex, and this is 45 and a half inches long. Head size is 460cc standard. So, I am just going to get set up and tell you about where I am today, um, and then we're going to play the game of hitting some multiple driver speed shots here. We'll mix the shots up, we'll hit some high ones, low ones, we'll swing speed, we'll move around from sort of 80 up to 90, maybe up to 100 miles an hour. We'll hit some out the heel, we'll hit some out the toe, and we'll see what the results are. So maybe you can look at that shot and think, ah, that's the shot I saw they hit. What sort of numbers is that giving me back? Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, where are we today? I have just picked one of the driving ranges on the sim here. This is the, um, I don't know where it is, somewhere. It looks like it's somewhere in the Rocky Mountains or something like that. Multiple targets to sort of aim at. And the ground is set to firm, so there will be some runouts. We'll look at runout distances, but we're more interested in carry distance. So the first swing I'm going to attempt to make is somewhere into the mid 80s. Now, as I try and slow my club speed down, the difficulty is trying to keep the club face delivered to the ball in a fairly sort of controlled manner. But it's a bit of fun. Let's, let's see what we get. So uh, I've got a variety of balls on the deck. Most of them are Mizuno sort of balls, uh, sort of two, two to three. Some are two piece, some are three piece. So a mixture of golf balls down on the deck. Let's hit one, see what we get to start with. Well, it's gone straight which is a minor miracle. So let's pull that up on the screen and have a little look at the numbers. Remember there's some run out on these shots here because I have set it to, to quite firm. So let's dive in, let's bring that up on the screen. Hope you can all see the data here that's coming up and the performance data. So my club head speed there at impact was, let's call it 85 miles an hour giving me a ball speed of about 115 miles an hour. Okay, my launch angle was 15. I hit up into the ball, ever so slightly. Actually, I hit 0.8 down into it. I was trying to hit up into it, but I managed to launch it. And I got 176 yards of carry there with a predicted run out of 213. Now the strike location was a little bit tow. Okay. A 176 carry from 85 miles an hour. I'm going to try and repeat a similar sort of swing speed and see if those numbers change much. Now, I've absolutely pulled that one. I've got the club face closing. We'll leave it in. These are shots that you might hit, miss the fairway. So if we bring up the data on that, why that shit's 87 miles an hour at club speed. And what's happened on that shot is my swing path was slightly out to it, four degrees, and my club face was three degrees close to the path. So that was start, starting left, going left. It's come out the toe as well, which hasn't helped. And that's put quite a lot of side spin on the ball. Launched at 16, carried just 159. It's a poor strike. So it just goes to show you how important strike location is. And it's, it's gone nowhere, hasn't it? So I think the point of that shot really is when you hit the ball, <laughs> when you hit the ball that badly in strike location, there's no club in the world that can really turn that into a good shot, is there? That's just a bad swing. So we're leaving it in there. Of course we are, because we are we don't want to gloss over the, the bad shots, anything like We'll leave them in there. Let's increase the club speed a little bit, see what happens. Okay, 
So Club Speed's jumped on that one. I'm guessing. What did that feel like? High 90s? I'm gonna say 90s. I'm gonna say 98 miles an hour at Club Speed. It wasn't a bad game. I'm not cheating here by the way. This is this 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 is feel for me. So I guessed at 98 and it was actually 99 miles an hour at club speed. So if you're the golfer who's swinging the driver around about somewhere between 95 and 100 miles an hour, that's going to give you a ball speed of around about 138 to 140, smash factor of 1.4, and that's giving me a carry distance of 224 yards. Strike location was good, predicted run out, depends on ground conditions. 250 yards. There's no wind set here, it's flat calm. Um, backspin rate right there, 27, nearly 2800, and launching at 11.3 degrees. Not a bad result, really. 250 yards total, is it? How does this driver feel? How does it look, first of all? It, it looks, it's got the glossy finish on it. I did like the matte finish on the speed. I prefer a matte finish rather than a glossy finish. I don't think this is bad. Um, it's quite jazzy, you know, the colours on it are quite bold. Um, it doesn't look from above too dissimilar to the SZ. I know there are different variations, but it's got that Cobra S look to it. I think it's a very attractive club. We'll give you the marks in a minute, okay? Um, forgiveness, it's definitely got some forgiveness in it. Um, when I was testing this earlier, I was hitting it all over the face and kind of getting away with it. So let's hit another one at that sort of speed or maybe just a little bit slower. We'll maybe try and get this out of the toe a bit and see what happens to it. It fell a bit toey. We'll see what uh, GC2 tells us. Can't see a strike mark on there. I'm guessing mid 90s again, club speed. 97, yeah. I actually said that as it came up, so I did, I, I did it, I wasn't cheated, it's exactly how it felt. Same centre strike, very difficult sometimes with modern driver to actually tell where you're hitting it from. But it was a centre strike, um, launched a little bit low, spinning at 3000, carry was 208 and the run out was 242. Right, we're going to keep with this regular shaft in here. And we're going to open the taps a little bit and we're just going to jump on one and see what happens. This should get up, I don't know, we should be able to push up to sort of between 100 and 105. Now what's happening here is I've just pull hooked it, pull drawed it, whatever you want to call it. That could be, and this is not me sort of laying blame at the club, when we start to build the club speeds to a higher level, what was that? It was 105 miles an hour. The club face was definitely closed. That could have been me, not laying blame on the club, but it could be that the regular flex here is kind of struggling to cope with that sort of club speed. And what tends to happen when you overpower a shaft is we get this effect where the shaft kicks Okay, so it kicks this way and closes the face down a little bit, um, causing the club face to be closed at impact. That's why the ball's probably gone left. Could have been a little bit of me as well. Carries about 240, running out to about 280. Spin rates down to 2,000. So, interesting. Great club. Certainly a club that's going to give you a lot of forgiveness. Um, let's give it some marks uh, out of 10. So we'll go appearance, and this is very subjective. This is just how I feel about the club. You may look at it and completely give it a different set of marks. For appearance, out of 10, I'm gonna give that a solid eight. It's not inoffensive, it's attractive, it looks great. If it was in the matte finish, I'd probably give it a nine. I'm gonna give that an eight for appearance. Playability, now, I've hit a lot of shots in testing with this club with, with various shafts in it, and I think it is very forgiving. It lives up to what they're saying. Is. I'm going to give it a nine, okay, for playability. And for value for money, which will be our, our third category, we'll just keep it to three categories at the moment, this is going to retail at 
369 pounds in the UK. I think once it's been out for a little while, that price may drop down to sort of like two, four, three, four, nine. But at the moment, it's 369 pounds. And I think for the performance of the club and the quality of the shafts that you can get fitted to this club, there's a variety of them. I think 369 is good value for money. So I'm going to give it a nine for value for money. So we'll put those on the screen, add them all up, give that a total, and we'll bank that away. So when we do future reviews, we'll be able to do sort of little comparisons um, as to how everything matches up. And I wouldn't be too surprised if all these drivers are going to try and come up fairly similar in terms of what, how I mark them because I'm going to be doing the new Mizuno driver, I'm going to be doing the new Ping driver. I think they're going to play quite similar, but we will find out. So there we go, a little bit different today, some variable speed testing, taking into account some misstripes, some good swings, some bad swings. What do you think? Good idea? Bad idea? Like it? Hate it? Don't be shy, post your comments down below. I've enjoyed hitting the Cobra Rad XB driver. It's a great club and um, I think it should be on your list if you're going to consider buying a new driver in 2021. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give it a little thumbs up. And if you're interested, there's a bell icon somewhere that you can click, which notifies you when I post new videos. That's it. Bye for now.